So um, good morning, good afternoon uh, to all our um, uh, fellow travelers and travel um, agents who logged into our last webinar of 2021. Um, I would like to welcome you all and uh, wish you a great day on behalf of Czech Tourism and Central Bohemian region. Um, so I'll start by introducing um, my colleagues who are part of the webinar today. Um, so it will be my colleague from uh, the region of Central Bohemia and the project manager for the Central Bohemian Tourism Office, Ms. Veronika um, uh, Štiričková. And I also would like to introduce or reintroduce my colleague Radka Křížek, um, who is our PR manager and is going to be on the webinar today, managing the questions and answers and um, helping in the back end. Uh, so without any further ado, um, let me just um, tell you how we have um, the webinar sort of structured. Um, so those of you who participated in our webinars before know that we usually put um, and invite you on a virtual tour after presentation. So today will be no different. So we have um, a virtual tour prepared for you um, after the presentations. The virtual tour uh, will start um, about 30 minutes into um, into the, the webinar and you will be provided a Zoom link. Uh, so it means you will have to hop off from the big marker uh, platform and just join a Zoom link that will magically uh, transfer you to the beautiful town of Kutná Hora where we will have two guides uh, showing you around. Um, but before the virtual tour, uh, we will have um, presentations about the Czech Republic done by myself, very brief one. And then, of course, this webinar is all about the region of Central Bohemia. Uh, and Central Bohemia is, um, I think it's really important for you to learn more because it's a region that's really close to Prague. And, um, you know, it's very often uh, combined with Prague, either as day trips or like short trips um, from Prague. So I think this is a great uh, piece of information that we will be providing today. So without any further ado, uh, let me just start with the, with the presentation. Uh, since we are in December and, you know, we're getting a little bit festive and, um, you know, the holidays are around the corner, I decided to show you uh, the Czech Republic and, um, and um, you know, uh, Prague and Central Bohemia from a little bit a different angle. Uh, so I have a few winter images. Um, and I don't know how many of you have visited the Czech Republic before, but I bet you that most of you have visited probably during the spring and summer. But we really want to show you that uh, Czech Republic is um, a year round destination. So um, it's great to come in the spring and summer and early fall, but also the winter is a great time to enjoy, mainly because of, of the holidays and um, you know the way uh, the cities are sort of decorated and ornated for, for the holidays. Um, so here you can see a beautiful image of Prague. I have to start with Prague. Uh, this is the Old Town Square, which is all dressed up for the, uh, for the Christmas markets. Uh, unfortunately, this year the Christmas markets have been canceled, uh, but uh, the beautiful tree is still up and, you know, people gather, uh, gather in the Old Town Square and just walk around. There are a few stalls where you can buy a few things, uh, but officially the Christmas markets have been canceled, but the city has been decorated, um, you know, um, beautifully once again. And um, it's really nice to spend uh, this time of the year in, in the Czech Republic. Um, this image um, or this a few images that you see on this slide also uh, sort of show you how um, beautiful Czech Republic can look um, in the winter. So these are actually images, uh, except for the Christmas cookies, from uh, central Bohemia. And um, what you can see is a beautiful castle called Karlstein Castle uh, under the snow. And actually, I think about two weeks ago, right, Veronica, if I'm not mistaken, there was a big snowfall. So uh, Czech Republic looked magical. Um, and this is how uh, Karlstein, the big, uh, you know, one of the biggest medieval castles in uh, in the Czech Republic looks like under the cover of snow. And some of the castles and chateaus are actually open during the winter. Uh, and this is one of them. Uh, so you can still visit it uh, during the holidays and um, during during the winter time. 
Uh, the image below it, it's an image from uh, Bohemian Paradise, um, a beautiful countryside. Um, again, in central, in central Bohemia, you will hear all about it, but um, it definitely looks magical. You see the sandstone uh, formations, um, so definitely great for hiking as well during the winter. And if you feel tired and you want to get um, a little bit pampered and you know enjoy the luxury, you can uh, visit some of the beautiful uh, chateaus that are converted into hotels. Um, so this is an image from uh, Chateau Mceli, uh, which is again not far from Prague and absolutely stunning uh, for the holidays, all dressed up, you know, festive, and you can spend a nice um, pamper weekend um, relaxation and um, and just get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. And last but not least, you know, when it comes to holidays, I have to mention the Christmas cookies. Um, Czechs are really known for making different varieties of, Czech, uh, of, of Christmas cookies. And there's uh, families that, you know, make up to 15 different varieties. Um, so uh, this is something you can definitely taste during the during the holiday season. And you can, um, of course, buy it as well. But it's something very typical. And every family makes uh, makes their own recipes and, you know, um, trade with another and just bring it to, to, the, to the visits, etc. So this is just a little little taste of, of the holidays in the Czech Republic. Uh, if we stay on the wave of good news, um, I want to say that um, United and Delta both announced uh, new nonstop flights uh, for the upcoming season of 2022. So as of May, we should have again nonstop flights from uh, from New York to Prague, which is great. Uh, we hope it's going to remain in um, you know in place and uh, it will indeed happen. Um, so where do we stand and who can travel to the Czech Republic? So as of now, you know, fully vaccinated American Canadian citizens um, can visit. Um, you don't need a test before arriving. You just need an arrival form and you need to bring your vaccination cards. Um, the vaccination card is necessary for your hotel check in for, um, you know, restaurants, etc. Uh, Mask mandates are in place, uh, so especially indoors, you have to wear a mask on public transportation, etc. Uh, the regulations might change, but we are here to um, help you and uh, you know guide you and inform you about um, about the current up-to-date um, regulations and rules for entry requirements. But as of now, fully vaccinated travelers can uh, can visit without uh, further restrictions. Um, if you're traveling within Europe, because that's also um, a lot of, um, you know, those are also a lot of the questions we get. I'm traveling from Vienna to Prague. Can I, um, what do I need, etc.? Check this website, reopeneuropa.eu, which pretty much sums up all the entry requirements for the European Union. And now um, we're zooming in sort of to central Bohemia. So I'll just start um, uh, a little bit more broadly uh, with the Czech Republic. So I always like maps. Um, and as you can see, Czech Republic is in the middle of Europe. Um, so we're talking about Central Europe and then we're going to talk about Central Bohemia. Uh, so Czech Republic is bordering with Poland, um, Austria, uh, Germany and uh, Slovakia. Uh, it's a relatively small country. Uh, the population is about 10.5 million. Um, the size wise, it's roughly the size of South Carolina. The capital city is Prague. Um, again, it's not a huge city by 1.2 million people. So great for, for walking and exploring on foot. Uh, Czech Republic is, um, you know, uh, perfectly accessible um, either by direct flights, as I said, or you can very easily do layovers in the major European capitals and um, any European capital is pretty much, you know, up to two hours from Prague. Uh, Prague has the international airport, but there are excellent connections also to Vienna, Berlin, Budapest, etc. Uh, we're part of the European Union and also we're part of the Schengen zone. Um, but we're not using the euro yet, we're still using the Czech crown. Czech Republic is incredibly diverse. Uh, we have 16 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We have more, um, more over than uh, over 2000 castles and chateaus. We have great spas. We talked about those in our past webinars. We have great countryside for um, hiking and biking. Um, but right now we're going to be talking about Central Bohemia, and I believe Veronica will um, really, uh, you know, focus on all these topics that I just mentioned. 
And last but not least, I also want to mention that we have a, a Central Europe specialist program that covers the whole region of uh, Central Europe. Uh, this program uh, is a program that covers four countries, uh, Czech Republic, Poland, Hungary and Slovakia. And uh, you become a specialist in Central Europe and then become our preferred partner for um, trade activities. So check it out if you haven't done so before. It's a really great informative program. And um, my last slide is uh, basically contact information for our office in New York. Um, our U.S. office is based in New York and we do cover here from uh, we cover uh, U.S. and Canada from here. Uh, our emails are um, there and um, I'm not going to probably uh, see you or hear you before the holiday. So I also want to wish everybody a great holiday. Um, Happy New Year, and um, I hopefully see you in the Czech Republic next year. Um, but now um, let's turn uh, to Veronica, who will tell you about Central Bohemia. So, Veronica, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, good morning, everyone, uh, wherever you are in the in the world. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in this in this uh, webinar. Uh, as you uh, mentioned, my name is Veronica and I work in the Central Bohemia uh, Tourist Board as a, uh, as a project manager. And in the next 10, 15 minutes, uh, I'm going to take you uh, for a real quick tour uh, of the Central Bohemia region. Uh, as uh, Michaela said earlier, uh, the Czech Republic, also um, known as Czechia, is a landlocked uh, country uh, bordering with uh, Germany, Austria, uh, Slovakia, and Poland uh, with their capitals. Uh, we've got some direct connection or Prague has uh, direct connections by coaches or by trains. Uh, even though Central Bohemia is the largest region uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, the most distant place uh, is only about 50 miles uh, from Prague. And uh, who are we really? Uh, we are a, a marketing organization fully funded by the, uh, by the Central Bohemia region. Uh, our mission is to foster and develop uh, domestic and, uh, and uh, international tourism. And our efforts are actually not in vain. Uh, the numbers of visitors uh, in the accommodation facilities have never been higher than uh, this year. Uh, naturally, our key markets are Prague itself, uh, Germany, Austria, Slovakia, uh, Poland, uh, the Netherlands, Italy, and even uh, the United States. Um, uh, why Royal Region? Uh, the World Royal itself is the life threat of uh, Central Bohemia. For centuries, this region shaped our history uh, from the first settlements and uh, tribes to Przemysl Hill uh, forts and royal towns with special rights bestowed uh, by the monarch in, uh, himself. Uh, usually these rights were the beer brewing, the spas, the mining and panning. Um, on our land, there are hundreds, literally hundreds of, of castles, uh, chateaus and fortresses, and most of them are open to public. And in the central Bohemia, you can find uh, the summer residence of the, of the Czech presidents. Uh, but first, some practicalities. Uh, while visiting Prague, uh, it would be a sin not to visit central Bohemia. Our key market is Prague, so naturally I, um, I chose Prague as a starting point of our virtual trip. And most of the sites are very easily reachable by public transport or by car. Uh, probably the most famous castle, Karlstein. Uh, it takes only about 40 to 45 minutes by train. Uh, the mining town, Kutná Hora, 55 minutes by train. Uh, Dobříš mělník konopiště, uh, very easily reachable by, by coach. Takes not even an hour to get there. Uh, once you decide to visit the region, uh, you don't have to worry, you'll go hungry, because uh, there are many dining options, even in the, in the smallest and remote town. 
uh, some kind of a of a tavern or a pub uh, are basically like anywhere. <laughs> and as many uh, many of you probably know that um, uh, Czechs are passionate uh, beer lovers. And so we do have uh, several breweries, craft breweries, or even family breweries. Um, most of them are on every single corner. Uh, in the central Bohemia, we've got about 50 or 55 of them uh, last time I, I counted. Um, uh, as a why, it would be a very wise choice uh, to stay overnight. Uh, last year, there were about 900 accommodation facilities in our region. Uh, some of them are pretty much conventional, like uh, hotels and B&Bs. Uh, but you can opt for uh, majestic accommodation, such as chateaus, uh, Chateau Msely, Chateau Loučeň, uh, Liblice, Jemniště, Berchtel. Uh, these are pretty much popular uh, among the majestic accommodations. Uh, or you can try some unconventional facilities, such as tree houses or uh, glamping in Malashov. Uh, medieval castle. I personally uh, love Amazing Places platform, uh, which introduces unique and magical places you can uh, rest your hat. Uh, so these are some uh, of those uh, facilities I've mentioned. Uh, Chateau Msely, uh, Glamping, Malashov, uh, the Royal or Majestic accommodation facilities. And now for the sites, uh, attractions and activities. Uh, our region has plenty of old towns with, with uh, historical cores. Uh, some of them offer great activities and um, some of them uh, could be a really great base for exploring the region itself. Uh, Later today, we will visit a former mining town, Kutná Hora. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, uh, so I'm just going to say uh, it's a famous for silver mines, uh, which you still actually can visit. Uh, they will borrow you this white fancy white jumpsuit uh, and lamplight so you can explore the mines for yourself. And in the nearby Ossery, there is a collection of human bones and skulls and um, those of you who voted uh, 40,000 skeletons in the poll, uh, you were right. Uh, it's important to uh, mention that Kutná Hora uh, and Sedlec Asari are on UNESCO heritage list. Uh, they used to be one of the richest uh, medieval towns in, in Europe. Uh, majority of the sites uh, or the castle, chateaus, uh, fortresses um, are protected by the National Heritage Institute and therefore we can still admire uh, mostly original equipment and art pieces. Uh, Karlstein Castle, uh, uh, sacred halls are one of the best in the world. Uh, they were inspired by Saint Chapelle of Paris and just imagine the precious golden ceiling uh, with Venetian glass, medieval panel paintings and uh, walls covered by precious stone. It's, it's just amazing just to stand there and feel the atmosphere or the vibes. Um, as I mentioned, the, the National Heritage Institute, uh, it also runs some of these castles and chateaus. Uh, for example, this one, Konopiště. Uh, but some of those castles and chateaus are uh, still privately owned, uh, such as Český Štenberg and the Amnistia, these two uh, castles and chateaus in the middle, or also Mielnik and, and Dobříš. Uh, once you're in the central Bohemia, you shouldn't skip uh, the nature while you're here. Uh, we've got six protected landscape areas with one particular aspiring for the national park that would be the Krivoklatsko uh, protected landscape area. Uh, we can offer woodlands, dense forests, uh, massive rocks, uh, canyons, uh, military training grounds. Uh, then we've got some technical monuments, such as uh, uh, mining museums, uh, glass making factory in Nizhborn. You can, you can try to uh, blow 
your own glass. Uh, you can visit the the, the car uh, factory, uh, Škoda, probably the most famous one we we have. And then we've got some open air museums. Uh, the rural car, uh, culture is represented in the open air museum. Basically, they are uh, very similar to the Colony of Williamsburg, uh, just a bit smaller. Uh, smaller. We've got three of them in Kouřim, Vysoký Chlumec, and in Přerov. Uh, in Vysoký Chlumec, uh, this one uh, was in the movie Spider-Man Far From Home, so pretty famous one. Uh, not far from Prague and uh, less than an hour by car are golf courses of central Bohemia. We've got um, about 25 of them and uh, several ones are situated in a lovely natural surrounding such as this one near Karlstein or in uh, Konopiště area. Uh, for sport lovers, uh, we can offer many uh, domestic and international cycling routes uh, or wide walk, uh, wide walk there, uh, rafting, ski resorts, and so on. Uh, we have a pretty great infrastructure, uh, uh, even uh, though we've got no Alps or Aspen Mountains, the hills are perfect for families with small children. Uh, uh, the hills are close to Prague and uh, very affordable with many great uh, ski rentals, schools, shops, restaurants. And if you're searching for a getaway or just a day full of activities, you can treat yourself with some uh, great adrenaline rush in uh, Milovice tank training area or in uh, the Miraculum amusement, uh, amusement Park. Uh, or just a simple plain uh, aqua palace, uh, even though it's called in, in Prague, but it's a bit, bit far, not far, about 15 kilometers from Prague in our region. And last but not least uh, is our film office, as our region can be seen on numerous movies and series, such as uh, The Illusionist, uh, The Mission Impossible, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, we provide information about conditions, possibilities for filming in the region. Uh, we've got some contacts on, uh, for producers. Uh, we can assist with preliminary location scouting or we just provide uh, basic consults. Uh, nowadays, we are experiencing uh, Boom 2.0. Uh, these were the films uh, or recent films uh, uh, on screens. Uh, the Spider-Man Far From Home, I've already mentioned this one, Jojo Rabbit, uh, Oslo is probably coming very soon. Um, one of the open air museums start in the in the Spider-Man movie, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Mjolnik region was introduced in Jojo Rabbit, uh, but the protected landscape area start in uh, Anthropoid. Um, and uh, I can't really spill the beans on what's coming next, uh, but there are some very much in anticipated movies and series which we uh, which were shot uh, in the central Bohemia uh, that could potentially uh, attract some some visitors. Um, so that's that's all for me for now. Um, thank you so much for your attention. Um, Hope you liked our region. Uh, happy holidays. For, uh, yeah, sure. Happy holidays. And um, I hope to see you in Central Bohemia very soon. Thank you, Veronica. It was a great overview of a region that, um, as you mentioned before, can be visited for an overnight, but also, um, you know, a few day trips from Prague. So, I mean, that's one of the questions that we get quite often. What are the day trips uh, from Prague? How we can get there? What we can see? So definitely this is the region uh, where you can send your clients for day trips, but also for an overnight. And Veronica would be happy to uh, to give you more tips and, and information. We will uh, send you a follow-up email after this with all our contacts. So feel free to, uh, to reach out to us with any questions. Uh, I also know that there was a poll question at the very beginning um, of the webinar. 
uh, that open up sort of um, you know the, the whole uh, the whole hour. And I believe the question was Veronica, can you jump in and and sort of answer the question and um, and read the question, what the question was and what was it regarding to? Uh, the question was uh, about uh, the skeletons, how many skeletons are in the Sedlet's ossuary, and the correct answer was 40,000 skeletons. Okay, so those of you who guessed um, correctly, don't win anything, but <laughs> you, you took a good guess. Um, and, uh, you know, the ossuary itself is one of the most popular day trips from Prague, uh, but Kutná Hora is definitely much more than this. And um, you will have a chance to uh, take a virtual tour right now. So my colleague Radka put up a slide uh, which um, tells you how to join the virtual tour. So you basically need to um, sort of hop off this platform, which is the big marker, and open your Zoom, um, uh, put the meeting ID. There's no password. Um, so just go to Zoom, um, put the meeting ID in, and uh, we'll, we'll see you in Kutná Hora. And, um, those of you who have any questions afterwards, um, after the virtual tour, we will still be here on this platform. So you can come back in. And um, if you have any questions, we will be happy to answer those. But um, if there are no more questions, I mean, we check the chat, correct? And the um, and the Q&A. And I believe um, uh, pretty much everything has been answered. So uh, we would like to invite you to Kutná Hora right now. Also bear in mind that Czech, Czech Republic is six hours ahead. So it will be dark. Uh, so you will see um, you know, Kutná Hora in the evening. But unfortunately, this is the winter time and uh, this is how it is. But uh, Kutná Hora actually is beautiful in the evening and it's beautifully lit. So without any further ado, um, let's just um, you know, say goodbye for now. Um, I'll I'll thank you all, my co-presenters, and uh, all of you who participated, and hopefully see you on on Zoom. Bye bye for now. <laughs>